One, two, three. All right, looks like we're recording. Well, folks, welcome to My Alaskan Backyard with Greg for October 16th, Monday, 2017. Hey, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> oh, man. We had a weird week last week. And now, this week, it is gorgeous outside. It's it's uh, around 30, uh, 32 maybe. And it's going to be that way all week, but it's not raining. And the sun's shining. Uh, it's going to be a nice week. We were uh, out this morning uh, driving into Skankertown. That's my pet name for Anchorage, Alaska. We call it, out in the valley here, we call it Skanker Town. And it's pretty much universally called that by all of us. So I have a cup of tea here. Got the wood stove going in, over there in the corner. Heat some water up for some tea. You get some heat in here. Uh, even with all the electronics in my office here, I've got, let's say, two servers banging out 24-7 over on the corner. And I got two laptops and a workstation on this side of the room. And they're going 24-7, so got quite a bit of electrical heat being generated. So it stays above freezing in here, but... Once you get a wood stove, the wood stove going, it, it gets a lot toastier, and nicer here. Don't have to sit here in a sweater if I don't want to. I usually have to. In winter time, I'm sitting here with a, a insulated vest on and my hat, <laughs> gloves, and all depends on how cold it gets. But it does. The cold weather does keep the riffraff at, at bay. All right, so what should we talk about today? Well, let's go over to over to Facebook and look at that. Okay, here we go. What's on my mind? Well, not much. I think I did put some stuff up earlier. Let's see here. Oh yeah, I read today that we're that. Uh, Rocket Man says he's not going to talk to us until he can reach the what east coast of America with his ICBM. So I wrote up on the net to let folks know about it. And you're like, why are we screwing around with the fat Rocket Man? Let's fuck them up and be done with it. We're going to wait till this shit actually destroys the city, causing you know like two to four million or ten million casualties, depending on which city he hits. That would help if he hits New York City, Los Angeles, those big, huge population centers that are with a with a nuclear nuke, not an atomic weapon, with nuclear bomb. Nuclear folks don't know nuclear is a hydrogen bomb. Okay, it's not an atomic bomb. Atomic bombs are different than hydrogen bombs. Okay. Yeah. Still, the NFL shit keeps going on. Who gives a fuck about those dumbasses? You know? It's like... Oh! Hot Mike Caught Mystery Voice giving Las Vegas a stern warning. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a real fuck up. You know? All of a sudden, a lot of witnesses that seen ex extra shooters and shit are, are winding up dead or missing. You tell me shit ain't happening there, that it wasn't a government operation or a Dem Democratic Party operation or a deep state operation. That was definitely a military style operation. And they keep changing the story every five minutes. Now all the witnesses are disappearing. <laughs> Just amazing. Them fuckers, they want, they want a civil war like you won't believe, man. They just can't wait to, to try and lure the uh, conservatives and shit to the street 
so they could start their martial law crap and do gun confiscation. They think that we're all going to just sit by and let them confiscate our guns. They have no fucking idea what's going to happen. You know, the amount of carnage that's going that, that America is going to see if they go try to pull that move on us. You know, <laughs> you're dealing with tons and tons of veterans all over the country that are t trained trained soldiers. You know, some of us old farts have done. <laughs> have done insurgent operations before. You know, we can become insurgents pretty easily. Now, and them assholes won't be able to leave Washington, D.C. if we don't attack Washington, D.C. and take it. So they better watch their shit. They keep pushing the Civil War. If we, We're in a Civil War, folks, right now. If it looks like, if it starts breaking into open shooting and open combat, then you're going to see the next phase go. That was the first phase you saw in Las Vegas. And uh, previously at Berkeley and Arizona and a couple other places where Aptiva, Antifada, whatever the fuck they're calling themselves at, and, and their associates with the uh, anarchist, communist, and the Democratic Party, by the way, you know, they're uh, they're going to push it a little bit too far if it goes to open conflict, which they were trying to get it to go to, so they can use that as a pretense to disarm us. Well, we're not going to stop for the disarming. If it goes to open combat, it's going to continue the open combat. We're going to see splinters in the military. We're going to have uh, military units fighting each other, fighting uh, these assholes and fighting the government. You're going to see special forces units come be involved. You're going to see militias. You're going to see just mom and pops all over the country raising up and fucking fucking people up. It, it, they have no idea the kind of God's wrath that, that they're unleashing. And it's, it's pretty fucking pathetic. But uh, that's what it, that's what our lives are now. Okay, enough of that stuff. Let's go. Oh, there's Louis Farrakhan. Gee, he's a real outstanding soul, isn't he? And, oh, look at the red-headed asshole. Like a, a monkey. Opiate crisis fueled by drug industry. No fucking shit. No fucking shit. You know, as a veteran, I've seen that at the VA. You go in there and control, you know, talking to, you say you got, you may have uh, PTSD or you may not, or you just don't feel good or whatever. First thing they want to do is put you on mind-altering drugs. You know, if you got some pain in your back or something, here, take take these uh, psychoactive drugs for your, for your pain. You know, no, I don't... I don't want to commit suicide and shit when the, when you, when the uh, uh, I can't get no more of the pills, and, and, you know it's just really weird shit that they're trying they they pull on, folks. You need to wake up to that. I know you don't tune into uh, the Alaska my Alaska backyard to hear about politics, and I try to stay away from it mostly. I like to just show pictures and talk about camp, uh, camping and fishing and. Not so much hunting anymore since I can't eat meat anymore. I'm a forced vegetarian. It seems that my body chemistry converts animal protein into freaking kidney stones. And every time I eat meat more than one or two times in a row, little stones form and boy, man, did they hurt coming out. Oh, Kirkpatrick. Who gives a shit about that? No one's watching the NFL anymore. I don't know of anybody that is. There's probably some diehard fans, but why would you be a fan of people that, that give you the finger and stomp on the memories of your parents and your grandparents and, and your brothers and sisters or your uncles or aunts or, you know, your friends that died overseas and came back wrapped in a, ba in, in, in a body bag with a flag on top of it? Why in the fuck would you even consider watching people that would do that shit 
You know, are you that addicted to adrenaline rushes? They're not even your rushes. You, you watch your spectator. You're not you're not down there playing the game. What the fuck do you get out of supporting those morons that just shove it in your face every chance they get? Yeah, I'll never figure. It. Oh, here we go. And then the commission creates outrageous new policy. Oh, who gives a fuck? You people signed your death warrant. You're dead. The NFL's dead to the majority of Americans now. You know, it's like I won't watch them on TV. I won't. If they come on, if a commercial comes on for them, I turn it, you know. <laughs> I could give a shit less. Two years ago before that Kirkpatrick asshole, you couldn't pry me away away from the television set on on Monday nights. This would be Monday night football. I lived for that shit. Not anymore. Since that Kirkpatrick asshole. I, I, when they did that last year, that was it. I ain't had diddly squat, and I won't even. If it's on at the gym, I'll look at. I'll I'll go in another room and do something else. I won't, won't even be in the same fucking room that those morons are on. So your your mileage may vary, whatever. Oh, yeah. Here's that moron. How in the fuck did this traitor get promoted to sergeant? You tell me that. He was a PSC that deserted his unit under fire and the fucking Obama administration promoted his motherfucker to sergeant. You realize the fucking slap in the face it is to all all people that ever earned that rank? When you become a sergeant, you know, you got people under your care. You become their mama, their daddy their uh, protector, you know, your man come first. He didn't deserve to be a sergeant. He fucking ran out on his men of his unit. God, that pisses me off. I hope he fucking rots in hell. They should have the death, I hope they give him the death penalty. He fucker should have been shot for what he did. And all those guys of his unit that died, you know, their family should be able to be on the firing squad. Ah. All right, calm down, calm down, calm down. Let's see what else we got here. No in a tight pants. That my, oh, fuck, these Muslim assholes. God, I'm so sick of these idiots. Go back to your fucking desert and your fucking camel fucking and leave, a, leave civilized people alone. Nobody gives a shit about the NFL. Stop watching fake news, okay? Okay. Bob, hey, it's one of my relatives. It's virtually all Wi Fi. Duh, of course there's weakness, and you can hack in. A, a Wi-Fi device just as easily as a wired device. I mean, they're this, they're the same fucking thing. One of them uses copper wires to transmit the impulse, and the other one uses radio waves. It's the same fucking impulse <coughs> containing the same data. You know, if you can hack one, then you can hack the other. It's just stupid for, to even suggest that it's different than that. Oh, okay. The Red Cross. Build six homes with half a billion dollars. Yeah, my dad told me about the Red Cross. When he was, he went in the Navy along with his brothers during World War II. They were all, you know, anywhere from maybe 14 and a half to the, the 18, 19 years old. But yet they all went and served in World War II. Most of them, no, well, all of them in the Navy. And the old man was telling me, he says, yeah, we were at our departure, you know, at the pier and stuff, getting ready to the, the sail into combat. I guess they had a rear area thing there during the middle of the war uh, when they were doing the South Pacific island hoppings. They had some safe havens where 
the ships would come in and resupply and, and, and get ready for the next operation. He was on a landing ship tank, an LST, and they saw a lot of that action from island to island. They were over at Bougainville, they were at Guadalcanal, all over the place. He was a Navy cook that was assigned to a Marine detachment. So he told me the story about, yeah, they, they were at the pier, we were getting ready to, they had coffee, you know, they made us pay for the coffee. And they were selling blankets to people, you know. They got it, they get all these donations and it all goes into the, the corporate uh, welfare for the, for the high wigs and the people that they're supposed to help help get fucked. Now I'm not saying all of them do that, I'm sure there's some dedicated men and women of the Red Cross down at the lower level levels, but the majority of them are fucking criminal assholes. And, you know, just like, hell, they might as well be part of the Clinton Foundation and have the same modus operandi. Well, Three months pot bust. Well, what the fucking deal? Get it legal in your fucking state, then you don't have to worry about that. Get off your ass and go to the polls. Get off your ass and go get initiatives started. Get off your ass and go pressure your politicians. Then you don't have to worry about getting busted. How the hell do you think the people of Alaska did it? Or Colorado or Oregon? You know, it just didn't happen. They got off their dead asses and, and made it happen. So until then, don't fucking give me shit. Tell me that, you know, these poor celebrities got busted. Fuck these celebrity assholes. Oh, here's that moron Patrick again. God damn it. Makes me sick to look at him. And there's one of my second cousins, I think. Nah, I don't know what that is. USB gadgets now. Is this the one with the camera in it? Oh, this is awesome. Talk about good security shit. You got a camera that's built into a USB uh, charger. That's almost as good as the light bulb. If you guys seen the light bulb, light bulb camera, it looks like a regular uh, incandescent light bulb or, or no, an LED light bulb type thing. It's got a wireless transmitter in there. And it's got a camera and a microphone, and it looks just like a fucking bulb. You you substitute it for regular uh, and your regular fixtures, your bulbs. <laughs> you got all this surveillance. We live in a surveillance society, man. It's, uh, the government knows everything. That's why when I make these videos up and place them online, I know at least one person is viewing them, and that's the NSA. And I know that everything that, that they're seeing is being, is being archived. Every bit of data is flying through the, the air is getting captured and archived by the NSA. So in a sense, I am immortal because as long as as long as their their storage shit doesn't get wiped out, which it probably won't, it's probably in a bunker somewhere, and maintained after even a nuclear war. My descendants may be able to listen to my podcast and figure out what kind of dude I was. So I might be right now talking to the future. I'm talking to the future right now. Isn't that wild? Isn't that trippy? All right. That's enough of that. Let's see. What else can we do here? Oh. Well, I used to have uh, sound associated with these broadcasts, these podcasts and stuff, but... Uh, what is it at? It's not Facebook. Not, I want to see YouTube. Okay. So, but now on YouTube, when I put some... When I put the, a... a uh, video up on there if there's any background noise whatsoever their a logarithm is smart enough to fit to f match it up against uh, known cuts on any you know performer that's in a, their database so i had the radio in the background on my last video 
and they came by and they they picked that up and then they wanted to monetize it and all well I don't monetize my videos so I had to go back there and take it and strip out the the background sound of you know I'm thinking God you can't even listen to it on the back in, in the background without paying for paying somebody a fee you know and that's pretty fucking terrible oh all right so this is the youtuber they got some cool stuff on there yeah. harvest is the pawn house yeah weed or potatoes weed or potatoes which one should we choose yeah. weeds pretty easy to grow you know that's why they call it weed Potatoes are hard, man. They're very nutritious, though. I planted. I used this guy's container method this this year, and I used five gallon uh, kerosene buckets that I had. And I got I got some potatoes, but they were really small, and they pretty much were just an inch under the soil. There are two methods of doing that. One of them is you just you just poke them in like normal and then another one is where you just put them in a little little bit of soil at the bottom of the bucket and as the green part stops popping up you just keep covering it with soil until you've got like a foot a foot of stem buried and then you let it come up and set leaves and stuff and then wherever that stem is it shoots out little roots and puts on a potato so now you got potatoes all through your soil instead of just at the top one inch or so I'm going to try that next year. I'll give you guys a report. Burning Man. That's just an excuse to trip the trip to take acid. No, no, no. I got out of that when I was 15, 16 years old. All right. So what else do we want to talk about here? I've been watching some channels on, on YouTube where they, all they do is, is have rants and bitch about shit. And I think, well, that's pretty cool. You think somebody would would want to see me bitch and moan about shit just like that? And I said, nah. I don't have the personality to be bitching and moaning all the time about everything. You know, you'd, I really, you'd have to care and, about something. and I find it hard to care about issues like whether uh, Walmart's doing this or that or or uh, you know whether whether the uh, the blue box has fresh veggies in it or they're old or whether the instructions are right or whatever so the people bitch about just about every fucking thing you know and that's the miracle of the internet and the miracle of modern technology See, when you wanted to bitch before, say back in the, in the 1800s or earlier, now I'd say back in, yeah, all the way even back to the 1600s. If you wanted to bitch, you either had to have somebody that knew how to write longhand. This was, okay, we got another spam. I was looking up there. You heard the beep. I just looked up there. Where was I at? Yeah, you either had to, to know people that could write stuff out on parchment or uh, lambskin or something and that was expensive because most people <laughs> didn't have that shit they didn't you know hardly anybody buddy buddy wrote back then you know and then you got when they invented the printing press that became exclusive to the rich folks you know and now there was now there's a way to record information but the masses couldn't get it because in order to use it you'd have to be able to buy a book and they were it most probably cost more than most uh, houses did and there were very very few of them so the things that got printed were the propaganda sheets like uh, the bible that was printed and things like that nowadays jump to the to, uh, oh, when did the internet start getting really hot? Probably about the 1970s, we started to, to see uh, the internet. 
we started to see internet available to the average Joe, the, 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 per, the normal person. You would see uh, timeshares where you could, if you had a telephone line and a modem, you could call another computer that a lot of other people were calling and attach and you could uh, exchange information, okay? Uh, it was all text-based stuff. You could, uh, you could send an email to somebody. Uh, you could send them a file, uh, but that was about it. And then this magical thing called Mod uh, Mosaic, the first graphical web browser came out, okay? And that back then, most modems were like if you had a, a 300 baud modem, you you thought you were hot shit, you know. 600, if you could double that to 600, you, you were probably working at a company that had money or a university system, you know. Then those started tripling, you know. You go like first it was 1200k, and then 56k became the the highest kind of dial-up stuff that they were supporting. Then all the other technologies started coming online for the internet and to move, to transport packets from one place to the other. Browsers were developed so that you could mark up, mark up text and add graphics colors to it. Uh, you know, you could format it out pretty good. Then things like uh, open software started popping up where you could, uh, you didn't have to be a millionaire or nothing to uh, put up a web server. Okay? You could run web server on commodity hardware with Linux, and a lot of people did that back then. In fact, a lot of people use, using the, just the simple computers that they had became uh, internet service providers because what they would do is they would, in a, in a town or something, they would, they would uh, set up their, their machine, have their friends, family, and everybody would, would call their, their uh, bank of modems. They'd get on, and from then on, you know, they would uh, s send a signal out over the copper wire through the telephone companies. And then the telephone companies got involved in, in the same thing. And there was price wars and all that shit. And now we have the Internet has evolved from that. And the key, the key part being, now that we have the Internet, everybody can have a printing press. Anybody. Anybody can share information, opinions, uh, documents, anything they want for anybody in the world now, except for some places that, are, that have uh, governmental restrictions that stop that type of information from transferring over their networks. And that's all pretty, pretty sophisticated shit, but it's nothing that, that is so hard that the average intelligent person couldn't pick it pick up uh, the way to do it, you know. So I now have a, uh, well, I've had, I've had websites, I've had uh, online magazines, I've had, uh, you know, uh, podcasts and stuff. So for, for the last 10, 15 years, I've had little bits and nibbles of that. And now that I'm retired, that's all I do. I play with that shit, you know. Uh, that, that's, uh, that gives me the ability combined with the fact that everything is archived now they don't have to worry about having the money to uh, have a hard drive and save the, de the, the pictures of the podcast and stuff that I'm making up you know for posterity for the future that's all done automatically by the fact that everything is captured by the national security agency and archived okay now if i was to archive these movies and stuff that i make uh these podcasts myself i'd have to buy equipment okay and i'd have to buy media i'd have to have uh, hard drives uh dvds and uh, all that different media has a shelf life that after a certain amount of time, they 
signal that's embedded on them deteriorates to, to the point where it's useless. You can't use it anymore. You know, so the, the immortality information dies that way. But now that our government takes over and because of their distrust of, of, the, of the population, every piece of data that's moving across the internet or across or just goes into the airways, you know, every cell tower, every, every cell phone call, every text, all that stuff is being recorded and it will exist forever because the government, when the end of the lifespan for one type of media, the, the government will just transfer that on to the next generation of media at their expense, not yours. So whatever you create and step up on the internet, it's going to exist forever unless you try and delete it. And that's not going to be very successful. Uh, once it appears on the internet, it's there. It's going to exist in one form or another for the end of time. So you need to keep that in mind when you're writing your emails about how your wife's not giving you enough pussy and you think this chick is going to be, is going to, you know, be good, good about that or whatever. <laughs> you know, don't, don't think that whatever you write about on the internet or say on the internet or text somewhere is ever going to be private. Privacy doesn't exist anymore. Okay? It's just the degree that you're aware that privacy doesn't exist. Some people haven't been awakened yet to that fact, and they assume that there's privacy involved in what they're doing, okay? Even when we used to write letters to each other and put them in the mail, they were never private. Okay, and, that, and now, with the technology we have now, there's no way in hell any of this that is private. It's just a matter of, is it hidden sufficiently enough at n now at the present time to give you the illusion that there's privacy? And as a hacker, uh, I can tell you that uh, with 100% certainty that if it exists on the internet, uh, it, it can be hacked, it can be found, it can be extracted. Uh, the government knows that too. But they're counting on uh, obscurity is the word I'm looking for. Uh, if people don't know about it, then they don't have to worry about anybody ever finding it, you know. But uh, there are a group of people, hackers, they have a convention every year, you know, twice a year all over the world called Black Hats. <laughs> and everything that's created for security is back engineered and uh, worked around by these groups of people. So there's no privacy. So don't even think there ever, ever is anymore. Whatever you do online, as long as you, like say if you were to, to live a place where there's no electricity, right? And you don't use a radio, all right? Maybe you might be able to get away with sending messages by carrier pigeon, that might work. But other than that, anything that you're broadcasting to any of those radio frequencies, that's all captured as well. Uh, and on that up note, let's go ahead and uh, and finish up for the day. And maybe I'll add some more tonight, or maybe I'll. It usually takes this for my uh, little podcast to get loaded up because of my crap internet. It takes. Uh, about an hour and a half to two hours. So sometimes I have to wait. Sometimes it takes all night, overnight, you know, depending on the size of the file. And yeah, I've got unlimited internet download, but there was only a 756k upload, so uh, large files, at least video and audio are, take a long time to move. All right, with that being said, I hear the cat. See if you can see her. There's a cat, There's a cat, cat in the window. window.
I don't know, I don't know. You guys, you guys are see her, 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 She's telling she's me, telling me it's like I need to wrap it up and let her in. in. It's, it's cold, cold outside, outside. 2020s. And, 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 and nobody, and nobody likes, likes a cold pussy. pussy. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Hotter, hotter pussy, the better. All right, all right. That's it, that's it. Bye. Bye.